do so and uh, we'll start going on the record and we'll take a break. Good morning, this is an evidentiary hearing in case number 19-1081-PET. This is the Public Utility Commission's review of the petition of Neverco Inc. for approval of an indirect acquisition of a controlling interest in Vermont Gas Systems Inc., Green Mountain Power Corporation, and subsidiaries of Green Mountain Power Corporation. My name is Andrea Papini, and the Commission has appointed me to be the hearing officer for this proceeding. And with me today are Kyle Landis Marinello, General Counsel for the Commission, and Mike Towsley, Staff Attorney. Um, before we get started, I wanted to acknowledge that the Commission has received 75 public comments on this uh, matter, and uh, we appreciate the effort that the uh, public has, has has put into this. So, so thank you, um, and uh, just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, so I'll start by taking appearances. I'm Daniel Burke on behalf of the Department of Public Service. With me today is Jim Porter, the Department's Director for Public Advocacy. And seated behind me are our witnesses, Mr. C.B. Harrell and Mr. Larry Kajawa. James Dumont for the interveners. With me on my right is my law clerk, Tillian Cowley from my law school. And on my left is Mr. Gardner, principal intervener. Good morning, I'm Deborah Buchbard from the law firm of Sheehy, Furlong, and Beam. I'm here today on behalf of Noverco, and joining me is the president and a board member of Noverco, Renaud Fauché, and seated behind me is my law partner, Owen McLean. Thank you. So have, have the parties stipulated to the admission of the pre-file testimony and the exhibits? I don't object to okay. the admission of any of the pre-filed um, So the, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and admit those into the evidence now. Um, that, that's uh, three rounds of testimony by Poche, Mr. Poche, and one exhibit, and the department's testimony of um, July 9th, and those are admitted. Let's proceed with Mr. Fauché. Noverco calls Renaud Fauché to testify. Good morning, everyone. You can raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fauché, could you state your full name for the record, please? My name is Renaud Fauché. And since the parties have stipulated to the admission of the pre-filed testimony, um, I will make the witness available for examination. Thank you. Jim, can you pull the mic closer? Thank you. Is this better? I think so. How about this? Is it on? Is there a green light? Uh, now there's a green light. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Pre-filed testimony on page three, the tail end of your answer no number four, you state, finally, I explain that the transaction promotes the public good under 30 BSA section 107 because it is not, I think you mean to say because it is not, a fundamental change in the upstream ownership. The change in ownership is very remote from the Vermont Utilities, and the transaction will have no impact on the Vermont Utilities or their customers. Can I read that correctly? 
Yes. In exploring that with you, I want to start with what you mark as your exhibit one, which is the structure of the various companies. I've actually prepared a copy of it for you to mark up. So we have a separate exhibit that we're going to call Intervenors Cross Five. And I'm going to, I may approach the bench and give the copy with a sticker on it to the witness. Jim, what are you missing? Uh, Mark up this exhibit a little bit to get started. In the top left on the first page, it has Noverco Inc. I'd like you to add in in your own handwriting, using the same format as this chart, who owns Noverco Inc. I can write it for you if you want. Yes, I mean, for the same reason you prepared Exhibit 1, because it helps to understand this complicated situation with the graphic. Now I'm giving you this exhibit to mark up to add to the graphic, so we can see visually who owned the entire parent-child relationship here. So the two owners have Noveco Inc. are Trendcap and IPM. Trendcap owns 61.11% of, sorry, my writing isn't too great this morning, of uh, Noveco. And IPL owns 38.89%. Then I'm going to ask you to put on the graph who owns IPL. I don't have any room. You can do it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit you pre-filed, you had the percentage of ownerships. Are you able to add that in your handwriting for the percentage of ownerships of the companies that own the Burco and the company that owns IPL? Yes, but it's great. It's not exactly perfect. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. it's all right. Now on the on the same page, on the right hand side, it says public. Do you see that? Yes. Can you circle the word word public? Now, on these parent-child charts, one, one, two, three, four, five pages that you submitted, is there any other entity other than Valineer that is publicly owned? No. And you've been practicing in the utility field as a, I believe you're trained as a civil engineer. Is that right? Sorry. You're familiar with regulatory concepts governing utilities in Canada, I assume? 
your assumption is it's good as mine. All right. You know the difference between a publicly held corporation and a privately held corporation in Canada? Publicly held corporations make public disclosures, correct? Correct. Privately held corporations don't make public disclosures, correct? It depends. It depends. They're not required by Canadian securities laws to make public disclosures, are they? It depends if they are public debt. If they're public debt. Are any of the entities on your exhibit public debt? Yes. Which ones? Energy. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Energy. So is Energy a public corporation that makes quarterly filings with Canadian securities authorities? It's not a public corporation, but it makes filings for its debt. I'm sorry, it makes filings for its debt to report on its debt. On its debt. Yes. In your chart, you didn't describe Energy Air as a public entity. Why is that? I didn't say it was a public entity. Let me show you what we've marked as Exhibit Cross 1, which is the 2018 Annual Report of Helen Year. Exhibit Cross 1 before? No. So you've never looked at Valenier's 2018 Annual Report? No, I don't sit on the board of Valenier. I didn't look at those reports. Why don't you take a second and look at it and see if it looks like it's the kind of document a reasonable person would rely upon. Could you repeat your question? I yes. just want to be sure I look understand at, it. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you to look at the document and see if it appears to be the kind of document a reasonable person would rely upon in the conduct of their affairs. I'm going to object to the question. I think it's a legal request, and it's going to whether or not this would be a document that could fall under three, um, BSA Section 810. Uh, this witness isn't um, in a position to answer that question. I'll, I'll move the exhibit. Um, and our representative was downloaded from Valenier's website yesterday. Exhibit is the kind of document that reasonable people not only do rely on, they have to rely on if they're going to make investment decisions. Uh, the same is true of the next exhibit I intend to offer, which is Valenier's 27th report, and the next exhibit, which is Valenier's first quarter report for 2019, and all of which um, qualify as admissible under the, the board's rules and the statute, and which bear upon the issues in this case. Would you agree that? Well, why don't you describe the relationship between Noverco and Valenier? Noverco and Valenier are both shareholders of Energy or LP. So you 
and you're president of Noverco, but you've never read the annual reports or the core reports of the partner in ownership of the company that they're president of. So that's what your testimony is? You don't, you don't read Valineer's annual reports? I don't read Valineer's annual report, no. Do you read their quarterly reports? I don't read their quarterly reports. Now, it, we're here because Navirka proposes to purchase shares of Valineer, correct? Correct. And you, as, a, as the president of the board of Navirka, you recommend that? You have recommended that, correct? Without reading the annual reports, the company you're recommending to buy the shares of? Is that what your testimony is? Did you ask the question again? Please. As Trish, president of the board of Noverco, you have voted in favor of purchasing shares of Valineer, buying Valineer out, correct? Correct. But you've never read their annual reports. Is that, what you, is that what your testimony is? Objection. This question has been asked and answered twice already. Can you repeat your question, please? Could you read it? But you've never read their annual reports. Is that what your testimony is? I've never read in detail the annual report. You're saying you've never read them in detail, or you've never read them? I've never read them. Have you read the notice of special meeting of shareholders to be held on June 11, 2019? It was issued on April 24, 2019, for the purpose of this very proposed acquisition. I did, in part. So that is four on the handle of this exhibits. <coughs> that is it. Are you familiar with exhibit four? Yes, I've seen it. Have you read it? I went through it, yes. Do you believe it's accurate? This is a difficult question for me to answer. Yes, I do believe it's accurate. I'm going to object on, on relevance grounds. I'm not sure how this is relevant to this proceeding and the issues before the commission. Um, this is the description by Valonier of the very transaction that is before the commission for approval. This is a public document. It's publicly available. It is, and I obtained this from Valonier's website yesterday. So 
either under the board's rules or under the judicial notice rules, they would qualify for either rule. Well, maybe it would be helpful if we proceeded to um, the questions so I could better understand what the um, point is that for which the interveners seek to admit this, and then we can deal with the admission question. So I have a question for Mr. Boucher that this may help answer if you needs help answering it. Would you agree that the core business of Energier is the sale of natural gas in Quebec and in Vermont? Uh, Energier has started with the Quebec distribution of gas distribution about some times ago, many years ago, um, around gas was added. But also another subsidiary was added, which is Green Mountain Power, and Green Mountain Power grew with uh, the acquisition of CDPS. Energia has diversified since then to renewables. They have bought uh, and constructed one of the biggest wind farms in Quebec. They just made another acquisition, which is the solar business in Maryland. So it's a diversified company. I confess I'm having a problem because I've been looking at page numbers that are PDF numbers, which turns out don't correlate with the numbers on this one taking a minute to make the correlation. My question was, and I'll, I'll ask for Rick to find the right page number in a minute if this doesn't work. My question was about the core business of Energy Air. Is the core business natural gas distribution in Vermont and Quebec? I think the core business is distribution of energy. Section 4.13 of Exhibit 4 is page number 27. Describe Velanier as follows. Velanier is an investment holding company whose business consists principally in the ownership of an approximately 29% economic interest in Energy or LP. Velanier, therefore, is engaged in the regulated energy business in Canada and the United States through its interest in Energy or LP. The core business operations of Energy or LP involve natural gas distribution in Quebec and Vermont, as well as electricity distribution in Vermont, period. And then it states, Valenier, through its subsidiary, subsidiaries, holds interest in wind farms, period. Did I read that correctly? Correctly. I did. So did Valenier, pursuant to Canadian securities laws, represent to shareholders that energy years Core business operations involve natural gas distribution in Quebec and Vermont, as well as electricity distribution in Vermont. Correct. Do you agree with that? Yes. Other entities does Energy or LP own other than? I'm sorry. 
what other entities does Novirco own other, other than energy? None. So when Novirco directors get together to meet, the only business they talk about is energy or business, correct? What's your understanding of why they're separate companies? I'll, I'll, can I go back? Sure, go ahead. The other, um, Noveco has two, one entity it holds directly, which is Energy Inc. You have to speak up a little bit, it's called Energy Inc. Inc. The, the general partner of Energy LP. And uh, the other one is we have some assets, we have some shares. So sometimes we talk about the shares. So back to my last question. What's the reason that Nervirco is a separate entity from Energy or Inc? Nervirco uh, in the past has looked at making other acquisition in the past. So let me jump ahead of what I've written down here and ask you now point blank a question that occurs to me. If Novirco has no other business than Energy or Inc., why did you answer all the discovery questions strictly on behalf of Novirco without disclosing information that Energy or possessed? That's a good question because the board are distinct between Energy and Novaco. The board of Novaco is not the same as the board of Energy. Energy has another owner in there, and the boards are different. The board members are different. Novaco is a holding company, doesn't have any employees. And Energy Year is has its own board with its own management with its own operation. The operations of Novaco are strictly as a holding company. We could go back to your exhibit one, which you are marking up as our exhibit six. We go through the companies on that first page. Tell us which ones have boards of directors that are elected by shareholders. Uh, shareholders that, let me rephrase that question. Exhibit four, which is the notice of special meeting of shareholders, pertains to Bellinier. That's a company that has thousands or hundreds of thousands of shareholders, correct? Which is Exhibit 4, sorry? Exhibit 4 is the notice of, of meeting, special meeting of shareholders. I don't have it in front of me, I'm sorry. Should have a yellow sticker with number four on the bottom. Sorry, I don't have it. Yeah, just turn it over. There you go. Okay. Do you know how many shareholders Valenier has? I don't know the, 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 the number, but it has a lot of shareholders. Yes. Thousands. Probably oh, yeah. How many shareholders does Nubirco have? Two. How many shareholders does Energy or have? Two. That's Energy or Inc. How about Energy? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Could you please ask your question? Yes, I, I should have been more clear. 
How many shareholders does Energia Inc. have? One. That's Neverco. Yes. How many shareholders does Energia LP have right now? Two. And that's Valenier and Energia Inc. Yes. How many shareholders does Northern New England Energy Corporation, the Vermont Corporation, have? One. That's pretty easy. That's Energy or LP. Yes. And how about NNEEC Quebec Inc.? How many shareholders? One. How about for my gas systems? How many shareholders? One. Green Mountain Power. How many shareholders? One. Going down on your page. Vermont Transco, how many shareholders? I don't know because it's 72.07%, so I'm assuming there may be other shareholders in there. Okay. And Vermont Electric Power Company? The same, because it's 38.8%. So, going back to Valenier, would you, would you be fair to to characterize it's, it as a publicly owned company. It says public. Until the purchase happens, it, it's a publicly owned company, correct? Right. But if the purchase happens, it will no longer be any publicly owned companies up or down the chain of command that don't ultimately stops with Vermont Gas Systems and Green Mountain Power, correct? Correct. So disclosures to the public, such as we've marked exhibits one, two, and three, annual reports, quarterly reports, there will no longer be any annual reports or quarterly reports to, that are publicly available that discuss Vermont Gas Systems business or Green Mountain Power's business, correct? Valinair, no, but I understand that Energy Inc., where all of it stands, okay? Energy Inc., where all of it is, will have to report on a quarterly and annual basis. Report to whom? To the financial institution. As to it, because it holds debt? Because it holds public debt. So is it reporting as to the public debt, or is it reporting to the activities of the subsidiaries that it owns? It's reporting its the financial statements as they are. They will have to be reported. I don't know the, the, the that's my understanding. I read your chart, it appeared to me that the only public institution, publicly owned entity is Valenier. That's what you wrote in the chart, correct? Correct. And I'll represent to you that when I tried to find public documents for Energy or Inc., I couldn't find any. Maybe I was looking in the wrong place. How would you find documents for Energy or, was it Energy or Inc. or Energy or LP that you were saying holds public debt? Energy or Inc. Energy or Inc. So Energy Inc. Uh, you think may have pub may publicly disclosed facts about its Vermont subsidiaries. Energy Inc. has to publish its financial statements on a quarterly and annual basis. It, I think it's on it's on the C what we call in Quebec the CR website. Right. Well, I'll represent to you that if you. If you put it, if you go to the CR website and put in energy, you won't find anything. I'm not testifying, but I'm asking you if, if that surprised you, if you're aware of that. I'm surprised. Okay. Um, be that as it may, Energy Inc. has one shareholder, correct? Correct. And Bellinier has thousands. Right. So whatever duties may apply to disclosure to 
public, owners of publicly held shares, publicly sold shares, that will cease to apply. Those duties will cease to apply. All right. Do you believe it promotes the public good of Vermont for its largest gas utility, its only gas utility, and its largest electric utility to be completely owned by private entities up the chain of command up the parent child ladder, whatever we call it? I think, as I've stated to in the answers to the petition, the main reason this transaction is proposed is to buy Valinaire. Because Valinaire, one of the issues of Valinaire is their uh, limited financial capacity to support energy and its potential growth. You say that in your pre filed testimony. How long have you been president of Nivergo? Since 2014. Have there been any instances where Vermont Gas or Green Mountain Power needed capital and they were not able to obtain it? Not to my knowledge. If you don't know, who would know? But to so you answer your question, I think making sure there's no restriction on funding capital can only be a benefit. Some of those restrictions that apply to Valonier include disclosure to the public, correct? What's the question? Valonier's contributions to the capital of VGS or GMP would show up in its quarterly reports, correct? Okay. Could you just rephrase the question here? I'm not sure I understand. We're discussing the ability of Vermont Gas or Vermont Power to obtain capital, correct? Is that the question? But that's what you said was the advantage to Vermont of the split of allowing the sale to go forward. One of the advantages is to continue on supporting that we, like Novaco has done and Energy has done for the last how many years, supporting the growth of what of the investments here and the subsidiaries. You said that while you've been president, there's never been any instance where Vermont Gas or Green Mountain Power were unable to obtain the capital they desired, correct? Correct. Does your knowledge expand, extend back in time before you were president? I'm not aware of any situation. Does that mean, well, I'll ask the question, you can tell us whether you know. Before you were president, was there ever, ever any instance in which Green Mountain Power and Vermont Gas sought capital from the parent corporations and were unable to obtain it? I don't know. <clears throat> you started to say that Access to capital is not the only reason this promotes the public good of Vermont. What other reasons are there? The other reasons, I think, is we've been supporting, and Nuveco and Energy has been supporting the growth of the subsidiary here for quite some time, and this will continue without having 
any issues with Berliner capitalization in terms of funding or requirements or ensuring that energy has a proper funding to grow. Why does growth of energy, as opposed to the market gas or green mountain power, promote the public good of Vermont? This transaction is a transaction which, for um, energy, is be able to grow energy. I'm sorry, is able to what? To, to help grow energy. Okay. Energy uh, wants to look at market opportunities, and market opportunities are defined as potentially other LDCs in other states or in Canada, and but also continue on supporting the growth of Burma entities here. It doesn't change, it doesn't have any impact, it's upstream of what's happening in Vermont. It doesn't have any impact on management. It doesn't have any impact on the boards. It doesn't have any impact on the day-to-day -day business of Vermont utilities. But it strengthens the capital that needs to be provided to energy here to support its goals. If I understood you correctly, you're agreeing that the only benefit, sorry, the only aspect of the sale that you believe promotes the public good of Vermont is improved access to capital. The other benefits are Canadian benefits, energy or benefits. Is that right? That's right. And you've agreed there's never been any problem in obtaining capital for Vermont gas or Green Mountain Power until now. Objection. It's not what the witness testified to. All right, misunderstood. You asked him if, if in his um, term as the president, he was aware, and he said no. And then when you asked him prior to him being president, he said, I don't know. That's different than it never happened. Okay, I accept that clarification. Yes. Question. Yes, I will. Thanks. I'm going to be a little legalistic when I do it. So, Mr. Fauché, bear with me. Do you understand the concept of burden of proof? Do you know what that is? Maybe you want to explain it to me. It means the party that wants the commission to do something, it's their job to convince the commission that it's the right thing. They don't meet that burden of proof, they lose. Regardless of what you or I might believe are the facts outside of the commission, in the commission process, an entity that wants something to happen has to prove that it should happen. That's a very fundamental explanation of burden of proof. So, I've asked you about difficulty in accessing or problems in accessing capital, and you said, there have been no problems while you were president. There would be no of that. And before you were president, your answer was you don't know. So, and I need to go back, okay, um, to that question, specific question, okay? There's been no problem for Novaco. I don't know about Valinet. And I don't know how the access 
third capital and how challenging it was for Bayonet to access third capital to fund energy in terms of their capital injection. So that I don't know. Were you involved with the Obera program? When Green Mountain Power became a subsidiary of, I don't know which entity it was called at the time, but of the Verico Award, one of its subsidiaries. What is the question was, was I involved yes. in Noverco when? I'll, I'll ask a better question. You understand Green Mountain Power used to be a publicly owned corporation? Yes. Were you aware of that? Yes. You were aware that the Green Mountain Power and the predecessors of Northern New England Energy year and Averco came to this commission and said the principal reason, or well, one of the principal reasons you should approve of this Canadian corporation becoming the sole shareholder, the owner of Vermont's largest electric utility, is because it will improve their access to capital. Were you aware of that? Not in the specifics. Because it dates back to when was that? It was 2007, if I recall correctly. But I may be wrong about the date. <laughs> so, when I tell you that, is that the first you were aware of that factor in the commission's decision? I haven't read the commission's decision transcript. So I'll represent to you that was that was one of the principal justifications for the approval. And you testified you're not aware of any difficulties the Mark Gas or Green Mountain Power had in accessing capital, correct? Correct. And you testified this morning that Whatever the public disclosures might be that are required of Energy because it holds public debt, Energy has only one shareholder, the vehicle. Correct. Energy Inc. has only one shareholder, the vehicle. And after this approval, I'm sorry, after this transaction is approved, if it's approved, Energy or LP itself will have only one shareholder. Correct. It could have two, but controlled by the same shoulder. So if you look at exhibit IP5 is the main exhibit. of your uh, exhibit one, which I would mark up as our exhibit six. The fourth or the fifth page. It's labeled three B as a baby. Or four. Oh, four. You're looking at four. Okay. So that's page five. Page five. And what does that tell you? Just what I told you, Energy will have, LP will have two shareholders. One of them could be an ALCO. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Which is itself owned by Navirco. Correct. I'd like to 
show you what I've marked as R exhibit cross six. Exhibit cross six. Let's spend some time. I'm going to ask you to make any corrections in it that you think are appropriate. And then, once it's correct, I'm going to move to the To exactly what you're trying to do here? We're trying to show whether your pre filed testimony stating that Vermont gas and Vermont power are autonomous is accurate. And in each of those columns, does that reflect all the board members? We did not include all of the directors of each entity. We included the ones that appear to have a relationship with Energier, Trendcap, Enbridge, or Enbridge. I would like to make one correction. Please do. And then you see directors? Yes. Yeah, they bar is not. Yeah, they bar. Yeah. Depar. Depar. D E S P A R S. He's not working for energy. He was the chief financial officer and executive vice president of Energy at one time. Until the end of 2017, if my early collection is correct. So, he worked at Energy Air, formerly known as Gas Metro, for a very long time. Correct. He became Chief Financial Officer and Executive Vice President. And is he still on the board of NNEEC? Yes, but he doesn't have any more relationship with Energy. Is he paid or does he serve as a volunteer? I don't know the details, but he's not paid by energy. So he's not an employee of energy anymore since 2017. So I wrote, we wrote on exhibit cross six next to his name, and I apologize for the spelling, but that's the S off of this, off this far. We wrote that he's now retired. So with that clarification, is this exhibit correct? I, I want to just understand what, I don't understand what this exhibit is, and is it a summary of the discovery responses? Is that where the information came from? This information came from the discovery responses and the disclosures on the Vermont Secretary of State's website as to the boards of directors of the Vermont entities. And what is it intended to show again? It's intended to throw into doubt some of Mr. Fauché's pre filed testimony about the autonomy of Green Mountain Power and Vermont gas systems. And even before that, I don't I don't understand what why are only some of the board members listed? We 
for trying to show the overlapping directors so and their connections to the parent companies. So for example, we didn't list Mr. Rendell. <coughs> Mr. Rendell is on the board of NNEEC and he's on the board of PGS, but we didn't list him because everybody in this room knows who he is and knows what his connections are. why I showed it to the witness rather than just put this in a brief, I'm trying to distill a fairly complicated relationship among five or six different companies with overlapping directors at one page and give the witness an opportunity to show where we've made a mistake. I think there's potential for this exhibit to be misleading and it's not presented together with the discovery response that shows the full makeup of the board. No, no objection to this committee and so long as the commission is also presented with, I guess, the discovery response. And we're planning to, we were planning to move it into discovery response as well. We can do that now if you like. I have no problem with that. It's just my concern is if you pick up what you've labeled as discovery response, then you're this document in the dub itself doesn't tell you what it is purporting to represent. It says overlapping directors. That's the principle. <coughs> and we added that this sheet summarizes the fact from the discovery answers that the entire board of NNEEC is appointed by Energy Air. The entire boards of BGS and GMP are appointed by NNEC, and as it states in discovery, each one of those appointments is annual. The same information is on the discovery responses, except the discovery responses are complete. Is that right? Except the discovery responses occupy about 15 separate pages. We're trying to show that. No, the discovery responses about the board membership that show the complete membership of the various boards are about two pages, correct? And they have all the information, not just incomplete information. They do not have all the affiliations. That's one of the purposes. But anyway. They list the affiliations, and then they list where those, who appoints each member. Is that not right? The discovery response is entirely complete. It does not have the description of what, for example, Ms. Roshu does, or Mr. Unglo does, or Mr. Lachance does, or Mr. Carl does, and so on. I think that's incorrect. I think the discovery response is she lists all of them. So, at worst, it's duplicate. Which discovery response are you referring to? The discovery response is to the department's questions. We have it. It's cross-exhibit eight. Page 11. And it's on a number of other pages. Mr. Dumont, it seems as though you're trying to ask a very large compound question of the witness of, are all of these categories, all the information, is all the information on this sheet accurate? Is that what the testimony you're trying to elicit? That's correct. So, it strikes me that you could ask all of those questions individually, and we could get answers from the witness to all those questions individually, but that may take up a significant additional amount of time. But if that's your preference, then that would be the normal way to proceed in this situation. My preference would be that if we're going to be asking the witness questions about the various members of the boards, different boards, that we work from the complete set of responses that lists out those folks, and we could do that 
um, without this summary exhibit that appears to contain information um, that Mr. Dumont found somewhere else. So I, my preference is we just work from the responses that were provided in discovery. My concern is that the full list of the boards of directors for each of the relevant corporations is not currently in the evidentiary record. And this exhibit in isolation without having access to the broader list is potentially creates, this could be a potentially prejudicial exhibit without having the contents. Let me move it to the cost statement, which is the answers to the department's questions. I wouldn't have objections. It's, are you moving for the entirety of this? Yes. So, I'm okay with that. And that would cover my concern. Um, I think of the cross. Mm -hmm. No, I know. So, um, yeah. I, I guess I'm wondering if. Um, I, I do think Mr. Dumont's entitled to ask the witness questions about every category and every statement that's on this document. Um, that is going to take up a fair amount of time. I wonder if a better way to proceed would be to take a short break at this point um, and have the witness spend some of that time looking more closely at this document and then we can come back on the record and see if there's an objection to doing it in that streamlined fashion and then take it from there. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds fine. I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, I think we'll uh, need to just have the, que the witness answer the questions about this because um, it's still you know, confusing and to answer the questions we think um, Attorney Dumont has about autonomy and what was in the testimony, um, we'll need to have the witness explain. Okay, I'd like to let um, that play out, please. Yes. is start with the top left, Canton, C-A-N-T-I-N. Are you familiar with that person? Yes. And what's the full name? Eric Canton. And was Mr. Trenton, Canton appointed to the Board of Numerical by Trencap? Yes. Next, Duquette. Who is Duquette? Francois Duquette. Was Francois Duquette appointed the board of Nevercro by Trencap? By HTP, which is Caisse de Dépôt et Emplacement du Québec. I'm Correct. Sorry. Okay. By its general partner. As I indicated in my testimony, Trencap is managed by the general partner which is a subsidiary of Gaza Depot and Placement to Quebec. You're going to have to spell that one for everybody. <laughs> I know what it is, but for the record, why don't you spell it? Cais, C-A-I-S-S-E, de, D-E, Depot, D-E-P-O-T, du, D-U, Quebec. Thank you. Someone named Fauché. You familiar with that person? I just have one oh, clarifying sorry. question. Did that general partner have a name as well? Uh, yes, it's in the testimony. Um, get it. It's, um, Capital CDPQ. So it's a testimony of June 7, page 3, question 5, answer. Is there a 
Person listed on our exhibit is yourself, correct? Correct. And were you appointed to the board of Navarco by Trendcap? To get to the GP of Trendcap, which is case. Correct. And next is Grunting. Am I saying that correctly? Correct. First name Colin. And he was appointed by Trendcap? He was appointed. To IPL by Enbridge. And Ms. Monsieur, Mr. Grunding is the Vice President for Treasury and Tax for Enbridge, correct? title change quite recently, but that was his name. I don't know when you pick up the title, so. And he's also the CFO of one of the Enbridge entities called the Enbridge Income Fund, correct? Mm -hmm. I'll represent to you that this information comes from yeah, from the, web, the website for Enbridge. If that's the case. <laughs> and if we jump ahead one second, he was appointed, Colin Grunding was appointed to the Novarco board by, sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Grunding okay. was appointed to the Novarco board by Trendcap, and Mr. Grunding, who is the vice president for Treasury and Tax for Enbridge, is also a director of Energy, um, yes, of Energy, correct? Um, you're right in pointing me something which I didn't notice before. Uh, in your first column, I'll jump ahead, but Grunding and Mackey are both appointed by two IPL by Enbridge. Grunding is not appointed by Trent Cow. Okay. Thank you for that correction. So we'll cross out Trent Cow. Cross out trend cap for Grunding and cross out Enbridge for Prairie. So we should write in after Grunding Enbridge. Correct. And after Perry, what should we write in? Trend cap. So Attorney Bupard was correct. We needed to do this person by person. What about Mark Maquis? Is he appointed to the Novarco board by Enbridge? Correct. And he is the president of Enbridge Energy Partners, correct? If you found it on the website. What, what's your knowledge? He works for Enbridge. He's been nominated by Enbridge. Um, you say he's the president of Enbridge Energy Partner. I just know they had a reshuffle of people lately. Was not appointed by Enbridge, he was appointed by Trendcap. Correct. And what is, 
Ms. Perry or Mr. Perry? Mr. John Perry. Are there other Novirco directors on the board right now who are not on this list? The board of director of Novirco has six board members. So we have all six. We have all six. Four are nominated to train cap by Maquette. Directors of Energy, we've listed you, Mr. Gunding, and Mr. McKee. Is that correct? As Director of Energy, that's incorrect. Okay, well, tell us, please help me correct this. If you go to Response to the first set of discovery from the DPS. Page four. Page three. The current member of the Board of Health Directors of Energy here. And you have the date of appointment. Marianne Bell. Sophie Brochu. Marie Deschamps. Renaud Pochet, Justine Gauthier. Justine. Justine? Justine. François Gervais. Jean-Luc Abel. Colin Grunding, Cynthia Henson, Jean Hood, Mark Mackey, and Pierre Monahan. And now appointed Marianne Bell. Who appointed Sophie Brochu? Sophie Brochu by uh, Novaco. Who appointed Marie Deschamps? I'll refer you back to to the question I gave you on page three of the scene of the DPS. And that will explain how we Novaco as a short shareholder of Energy or Inc. has agreed and covenant to elect representatives proposed by each shareholder of Novaco to the Board of Directors of Energy or Inc. to ensure that each of them has representation on such board of directors which correspond to a proportionate interest in Novaco, provided so long as the shareholder of Novaco has an interest in excess of 50% in Novaco, that this shareholder will be entitled to propose a number of representatives corresponding to the majority of the directors of the Board of Energy. In addition, for Energy or LP, Valenaire is limited as limited partnership of energy LP currently nominate three 
of the 12 board members of Energy Inc. based upon Valinath proportion of unit holding in the limited partnership. The directors are elected on a yearly basis by Novetco and Valinath and remain in office until the next annual shareholder meeting. Thank you. So going back to our exhibit, the three we listed are three of 12. Uh, which one, which exhibit you're talking about? You, I'm sorry. The three we listed were you, Mr. Grunding, and Mr. Maki. Those are three out of 12. Yeah. But all 12 are appointed either by Valineer. Or by Novarco. As I stated, no. But the three that we listed are also on the Novarco board, correct? Correct. And that's the explanation I just gave you to the reading of my answer to the question of the DBS. Now go to the NNEC directors. Um, if you want to turn to page four of your answer to the department's discovery. Top of page four. EEC has seven directors, correct? Sorry. And then the three that we listed here, Roshu, Roshans, and Despar. Start with the first two, Roshu and Roshans, appear on other boards of directors. Roshu and Roshans are also on the Green Mountain Power Board of Directors, correct? Correct. And Despar, who's now retired, is not on any of the other boards of directors, but he was CFO of Energia, correct? He was CFO of Energia and retired in 20, at the end of 2017. He's no, long, no longer employed by energy since 2017. If we could now look at back to page four of your answers to the department's discovery. A majority, four out of seven of the NNEEC directors either have worked for energy or currently work for energy or are Mr. Rezzo. Four out of the seven, including Mr. Rezzo, is a majority, and the four are three that have worked or work for energy GR plus Mr. Rezzo, correct? Majority of the board of NNEC is four votes, correct? Correct. Three of the seven board members 
We have a long-term relationship, now retired, with Energy Earth, and currently work for Energy Earth, correct? To properly answer your question, two out of the seven currently work for Energy And the third is Mr. Despot. And the third is no longer working for Energy. So those three, and you know what Mr. Rendell does, I assume? Yes. So those, would it be fair to say that those four persons have been for a long time or currently are affiliated with or employed by a gas company, a company that's primarily involved in the sale or distribution of gas. Sale and distribution of gas and electricity. Energy Year's core business is, as you indicated from discussing it, you said there's four, is based in Quebec, in Vermont, is primarily Quebec and Vermont, correct? Correct. Does it have an electricity business in Quebec? It's generating electricity in Quebec. It has some wind sites. Correct. But it's a very, very large distributor of gas in Quebec, correct? It's one of the distributors of gas in Quebec. Is it the largest? Correct. It's the largest distributor of gas in Quebec. Correct. Yes. So those the persons affiliated for a long time with the largest distributor of gas in Quebec, plus Mr. Rendell, are the majority of NNEDC, correct? Could you specify your question majority of what? Majority of the seven. Four is a majority out of seven. Four is a majority of, out of seven of what? Of the directors of NNEDC. Any four directors are a majority, yes. And that board appoints the board of directors of Green Mountain Power, correct? Correct. But with the recommendation of the board of directors of the subsidiaries to whom they should appoint. And the board of directors of Green Mountain Power is subject to losing their job, keeping their job every 12 months, correct? Night for Noveco, night for Energy Year, night for any other board. All annual appointments. The same is true for energy, or the same is true for Noveco. Sticking with our exhibit. the current the list of GMP directors. This is not the complete list of GMP directors. Do you agree that Ms. Groshu and Mr. Lachance are two of the current GMP directors? I'm sorry. Which exhibit you're talking about? It's our it's your exhibit. I'm sorry, it's our exhibit um, six. six. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Exhibit six. So could you repeat your question please? Yes, is exhibit six correct? insofar as it states that Ms. Groshu and Mr. Lachance are currently GMP directors. In my response to the DPS for set of discovery on page four, you have uh, the GMP board, which is Elizabeth Bancroft, Dr. Groshu, David Coates, Eric Tachon, Mary Powell, Francis Lassie, Lawrence Riley, Dave Walk. Thank you. And exhibit six is correct, it's showing that Carol Carl 
and Martin Inmo are not the entire BGS board of directors, but they are two of the BGS directors in present, correct? Cao Cao and Nathaniel are two out of eight board members, if I'm correct? description of Ms. Moshu, Ms. Imbro, Ms. Rochance, Ms. Carl, Ms. Maki, yourself, Mr. Grinding, and Mr. Vispar, Ms. Stefan Yakov, Ms. Exhibit, and see if anything written there needs to be corrected. Yes, the other bond needs to be corrected. Okay, how do you correct it? He shouldn't be there. He's still on the board of NNEDC, correct? But he's not employed by energy. And he wrote on the bottom, now retired. But he wrote CFO and executive vice president. Oh, so it should say former CFO and former executive vice president. Should say retired. of stating more clearly that Mr. Vispar is retired. And correcting that Mr. Grinding was appointed to the Nobilco board by Enbridge. Mr. Perry was appointed to the Nobilco board by Trentac. So those three corrections, retired, Enbridge, Trentac, this exhibit actually? No. Okay. What else is wrong? The other bar shouldn't be on that exhibit. Why not? He's retired. Because he's still on the NNEDC board. But he doesn't have any affiliation with energy. So would, would you like to write next to his name under NNEDC directors, parentheses, retired? He doesn't have any affiliation anymore with energy. Correct, but he doesn't have any affiliation with what you're trying to point here. I'm going to move exhibit six with a correction so that Grunding, the parentheses after Grunding now says Enbridge, the parentheses after Perry now says Trentac, and the bottom line describing Mr. Gaspar says he is the retired CFO and executive vice president of energy here at Sunny Hall and now retired. I don't agree. Are you, are you looking for me to, uh, yes, I, I continue to um, object to the admission of this. I think it's confusing, it's misleading. The information about who's on the boards, the complete information is in the discovery responses that we've already um, admitted, and that um, contains um, a, an accurate um, depiction of the full boards. So um, uh, I, I object to the admission of this. And as we demonstrated through the testimony today, there are a number of errors in this exhibit. Okay, so that's within your discretion. It does summarize the witness's testimony. There's nothing in the exhibit that he hasn't said. If you think it's helpful, you can admit it. You could treat it just as demonstrative evidence, so it doesn't have to be formally admitted. But you can use it if you see it's useful. I'm going to stand the objection that it's not admitted, but give you a chance to ask more questions if you wish to on this. Other than the changes we just discussed, is there any, and you don't have to repeat your position that Mr. Despard shouldn't be listed here. Is there any other correction you think this needs to be accurate? Thank you. 
to say that the additional information summarized in this exhibit is contained in the testimony we just had. If the discovery responses uh, identify cross-affiliation. I'm sorry, cross-affiliation cross between, they have star, right? Uh, in the discovery response, uh, they have stars that show mm -hmm. where there's affiliations by and among different uh, corporate entities. Are you asking me questions? I, I'm, I'm thinking that's where you got the information from, right? I've already Stated where we got the information. Just a point of clarification our interrogatory request number seven, which is on page 11 of the market exhibit, cross eight, expressly asked which entity was responsible for appointing the boards of directors or the members of the board of directors in the Bear Trail. And that's the small that it was trying to have a large trail. I'm sorry, did I cut which one? I missed the question seven. Question seven. That was specific. Excuse me, that was the energy recognition. Did you have a question for which slide? No, I don't. Okay. So, Mr. Dumont, just to clarify, there's this list of names in the bottom half, and then there's information after each of those lists of your of names. Using all that information is already in the discovery. I asked the witness. No, not all of that is in the discovery. But so I asked the witness if that was accurate or I wanted to say it was. Uh, but what I'm struggling with is the record that we have is not going to contain this document. So that's why it seems if you want a commission to consider that, I would have to ask. Uh, so I would go line by line. Is Sophie Roshu the president and CEO of Energy? Correct. Is Martin Pidlow the senior vice president for development, communities, corporate affairs, and safety of Energy? Correct. Is Eric Lachance the senior vice president for regulatory, IT, and logistics, and is he also the CFO, chief financial officer of Energy? Is Carol Carl the Vice President for Executive Leadership Development of Energy? Correct. Is Mark Maki the President of Enbridge Energy Partners? You say so. So he's not, that's not his exact title, it's something close? Something close. And you, I'm going to ask you if you're really sure of this. Are you the regional director of asset management at the CAS and the president of Navarco's board? I'm the president of Navarco's board. The, the, my title changed since we started. So. What's your title now? Managing director of infrastructure in North America. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Managing director of uh -huh. infrastructure. For the CAS. In the infrastructure team. Is Mr. Gunding the Vice President for Treasury and Tax at Enbridge and also the CFO of the Enbridge Income Fund? Something very close. And is Mr. Despar retired from his former position as Chief Financial Officer and Executive Vice President of Energy? He's retired. From that position, those positions. My recollection, yes. Thank you. 
I'm going to approach the witness with the commission's permission and give them my laptop, which is online right now, and it's on the CDAR website. I'm going to ask them to plug in energy here and see what happens. Is that okay? What is that website again, please? S E D A R. It's the equivalent of the SEC website here. Okay. To see if there are any public documents available about energy. We, 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 I think we can um, confirm this without going through this exercise. Um, so, Why don't we do it on break and then we'll stipulate to it or we can have them okay. look or if, if that's okay with the train we'll do it either way. acquisition that the Noverco, of which you're the president, is proposing to engage in is a $1.2 billion acquisition, correct? Correct. But the asset, except for some differences, are the same asset. And there is differences in Vanier that I now don't have same percentages of some of the asset. The core of the asset is energy. And we own 71% of energy. The difference is, my understanding when I looked at their numbers, is they don't have, their capital structure is different, and their Ownership of certain assets is different than what we own through energy. to the intervener's discovery question. Um, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to move across seven. Response to uh, the DPS? Response to the intervener's question. Intervener's question? I do it. If you could turn to pages 15 and 16. Question 1-3A one sought documents pertaining to minutes, emails, mem memoranda, letters about communications from any of the parent companies with Vermont Gas. 
in your answer on the bottom of page 16 concludes as follows. Notwithstanding the foregoing objections, Novirco does not have the documents requested, comma, was not involved in the matters described in the request, comma, and the utility projects of remote subsidiaries, such as BGS and GMP, are not part of Novirco's business and operations. Did I read that correctly? You read that correctly. Can I? <coughs> Yes, you read that correctly, and let me explain. Novaco's business and operation is a holding company. We don't have any employees. We manage investments. Okay? And the only investment you manage is energy, correct? And the main investment we manage is energy, correct? That is the only investment. As I said before, we have other shares in the portfolio of this sector. You are the 100% owner of Energy, correct? 100% owner of Energy. Hmm. Currently, the 71%, which is currently the 71% owner of Energy or LP, correct? Correct. Which is effectively the 100% owner of Northern New England Energy Corporation, correct? Incorrect. <coughs> Incorrect? Or no? Indirectly. Indirectly, okay. And NNEC is the 100% owner of Vermont Gas Systems, correct? Correct. And it's also the 100% owner of Green Mountain Power, correct? Correct. You're comfortable with submitting sworn Answers to, to discovery that state the utility projects of remote subsidiaries such as VGS and GMP are not part of Novaco's business and operations. Correct, because Novaco is a holding company that holds an investment in energy. Novaco is an investor in energy. Energy, as you pointed out, owns an NSC, and the day-to-day -day management is linked to Energy. Energy is managed by its board of directors, and we don't have any implication in the day-to-day -day of Energy. Okay, so What does the Novarico board have a day-to-day -day involvement with? Managing its investment in energy. As an investor. Investor and owner. Investor and owner with energy having its own board of directors and its own management, as you pointed out in the previous exhibit or previous whatever. I would now like to discuss briefly the cross exhibits. Nine and ten, which were attachments to the Novarico responses to the department's discovery, there were attachments 5.2 and 5.3, and already on the commission's website. Nine and ten. Mr. Fouché, do you have those? Yes, I do. Are nine and ten accurate copies of presentations by Vermont Gas to the Gas Metro Board of Directors in 2016 and 2017? Correct. Uh, 
discovery answers were produced in answer to the department's request. Have you ever seen this exhibit? Probably, but it was at the board meeting. the board of Noverco meet? Once every quarter. How often does the board of Gas Metro or Energy Earth meet? Once every quarter plus one additional time. So five, five, six times a year. Are the meetings held of the, of the two entities? Are the meetings held on the same day or different days? No, it's all on different days. was exhibit clause 10 was the document presented at a meeting of Gas Metro that you were present at? My recollection, yes. Was this document the actual piece of paper or the digital copy of it given to any of the Noverco directors who were not present at the Gas Metro meeting? Say that again, please. Sure. Was this document, Exhibit 10, paper copy or digital copy ever provided to any of the directors of Noverco who are not also Gas Metro directors? Um, okay. But this is the first time for me, so I'm going to ask if you to go slowly. Could you just repeat clearly your question, please? Sure. Are some members of the Noverco board who are not members of the Gas Metro board, Energy board, correct? Correct. A member of the Energy or Gas Metro board in <coughs> the fall of 2016 would have received a copy of Exhibit Clause 10, correct? Correct. Did any members of the Noverco board who were not members of the Gas Metro board ever receive? paper or a digital copy of the same document? No. And how do you know that? Because documents received at the Board of Directors of, Novec of Energy are documents that you receive as a board member and are produced by Energy and are for the benefit of the Board of Energy and not for the board, not for anything else. Was information contained in Cross 10 ever communicated to any member of the board of directors of Noverco who was not also a director of Gas Metro? My recollection, no. any discussion at any time among Noverco directors of the Addison Natural Gas Pipeline? This project was discussed for information purposes at the Energy Board, where there are some members of the Noverco Board. Some members of the Noverco Board. question was, during the time you have been on the board of Noverco, has the subject, the Addison Natural Gas Pipeline, ever been discussed at Noverco board meeting? Not specifically. It has been discussed around the board of energy. You said not specifically. I meant that we don't discuss the specific the specifics of what energy is what is presented at energy is discussed at the board of energy. 
there's a very fine line between what is discussed at dinners here versus what is discussed at Noveco. What is important for Noveco is when we have to make capital inclusion, capital contribution to for the stability of energy. That's what's discussed at Noveco. The way we function at the way it's function at energy or energy or comes back <laughs> to its shareholders when it needs to make a capital inclusion. Those capital inclusions are for rebalancing the structure of energy to maintain its credit rating. explain to you we make capital inclusion when we need to, to rebalance the structure for energy because energy are act as this is the time we need to rebalance the structure we need to maintain the financial credit that's when we or make investment in energy. I, I take it your answer is that Noverco doesn't invest directly in Vermont gas systems. It adds capital to energy, or which then makes the investment. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and it makes an... Yes. So I asked a poorly worded question. So let me try to do better. While you've been on the board of the capital of energy or so that energy or could make an investment in Vermont. So it should be at Mount Palo Vermont gas system. I don't recall specifically. There must be. Why must it be? Because they're supported the both energy or energy are supported both Green Mountain Power and Vermont gas. systems had a rather large need for capital, did it not? Sorry, could you, I didn't hear the... In 2014, 2015, and 2016, Vermont gas systems had a rather large need for capital, did it not? Which gas system? I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. In 2014, 2015 and 2016, the Vermont gas systems have a large need for capital. They had a very large project, yes. What was that project? The, well, the Edison, Edison project. Board of Nevergo. Yeah. It's an expansion project. So the Board of Nevergo voted to provide capital to Energy or to provide capital to Vermont Gas Systems for the Addison Natural Gas Project, correct? The 
Board of Tobacco provided capital for energy year to support this goal? Can it be GS? Can it be GMB? Can it be other projects in Quebec? It's pushed together, as I explained to you, to when needed between all the different funding, either debt or equity, to, to maintain the credit rating and the financial structure of energy. So I cannot pinpoint to you specifically. Would it be accurate to state that the capital needed for the Paris natural gas project was over $100 million? I think so. Would it be accurate to state that the board of the Virgo approved of investing in energy so that energy could provide over a hundred million dollars for the Vermont gas systems <coughs> and a natural gas project? Did it they probably provide for something, energy? The amount I'm not I don't know exactly because of the or did they did it come through debt? Did it come through equity? Not sure. In your <clears throat> when the board of Navarco was considering investing tens of millions of dollars, do you just sit around and talk or do you how many documents do you look at before you make those decisions? Objection. It's argumentative. The board of Tobacco makes a decision about investing tens of millions of dollars in energy or to invest in the Vermont subsidiary. Does it base that decision on any documents? You just repeat slowly your question, please. <coughs> Most of the decisions are taken, all the decisions with respect to Vermont entity Energy will make a capital call to its parent companies, Salinaire and and Novaco. As I said before, the intent of the capital call is to ensure the financial credit rating, the financial strength of energy. And was a yes or no question, so I can repeat the question if you want, but I am looking for a yes or no answer. The question I will repeat is whether the Verico is deciding whether or not to invest tens of millions of dollars in energy or for an energy or to invest in a Vermont subsidiary. Does the board of the Verico review any document? The board of Novaco reviews the, I would say, the call for an equity injections. The board of energy will review, will make the decision to for that call, but the decision for. Investing are made through all the, those boards independently. I would expect 
that the Board of Vermont Gas approved that and made the capital call to Energia, like the Board of Green Mountain Power, when we need the city, made the capital call to Energia also. Was that a yes or was that a no? Your question has two forms here, so I'm not sure which question I should answer. Maybe if you broke it down a little bit for him, he's, I, I think he's having a hard time because it's a, the answers in the, in the question. In your discovery response, <coughs> on page 16, what you read, you stated, Novarco does not have the documents re was requested, was not involved in the matters described in the request, and the utility projects of remote subsidiaries such as VGS and GFP are not part of Numerico's business and operations. The request sought all documents pertaining to the Addis Natural Gas Project. You told us under oath there are no such documents. They do not exist. I'm asking you right now, when you make a decision to invest tens of millions of dollars in your subsidiary energy or to invest in a Vermont subsidiary, in your testimony right now, you make that decision without reviewing any documents. My answer to that question is um, you've read it. So you, the Board of Numerico made the decision to invest tens of millions of dollars in, in energy or to invest in Vermont gas without reviewing any documents about the Addison Natural Gas Project. Objection. It, it's not what the witnesses said. And, and by starting questions with, with information that the witnesses are directed to, it's just confusing the witness. So the witness is happy to answer questions, but maybe we can break them down and, and not preface them with, with misstatements. So uh, that's not what the witness testified to. Our, our from energy or to the Thank you. What does that mean? Is that a call? Is that a phone call or is it? It's, it's, a, it's a proper letter saying uh, we hereby request by uh, under the uh, energy LP agreement request to show the um, for rebalancing the structure X, Y, Z, and all that. It's a three-page letter. Sorry, it's a three-page letter, mostly legal. sound like it from your answer from your hearing officer's question that making decisions about whether or not to invest in energy or so energy or to invest in the Edison natural gas project you did review a call and the call consisted of a three-page letter is that right we have a, a call for equity on them maybe we too often in here and that is presented at the energy board, and the explanation for that call are presented at the energy board. Correct. But what about the Navirco board? That's what the pending questions are about. Because you said there are no such documents that the Navirco board has looked at. Is the, is the call in 
writing, given to the Rebecca board? Because in writing is going is given to the shareholders, to the board shareholders. <coughs> Which means Noverco. Which means Noverco and Reina. So the discovery answer you gave us was not correct. No, that's that's inaccurate. You're mischaracterizing his testimony. He's saying that there's a three page letter. And and that's what he said. So, you know, I, 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 you're not allowed to testify into the record here or change the testimony. Testified to what he testified to. I'm asking questions. I'm trying to get answers. I'm going to take a break and you know, maybe the witness gets ready to resume. I don't think you need to break it. I think you need to ask clear, simple questions so we can answer them. Would you like to take a break at noon for lunch? Um, so we'll take one hour. So we will come back at five after lunch. Maybe during that break, too. Why don't we do that before we break for lunch? Or not, I mean, not, we can break, but we'll, before we'll break. you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back from break. And, um, yeah. gets a text message or anything from someone or is aware that there's someone who wants to be in the hearing room but can't because the elevator isn't working, uh, please interrupt anyone in the back seats at that moment, let us know, and we will try to set up a phone conference in or do whatever we can to accommodate so anyone who wants to be here but cannot access the third floor is able to. Thank you. Yes, and I want to start by making a correction. It turns out to use the SEDAR website correctly, you have to put an accent over the letter E to find energy. And number one, I don't know how to do that on a laptop computer. But if you do that, you will find that um, Energy does have reports on the website. So I was wrong. Mr. Fouché, I want to follow up on the subject we were discussing before the break, which is calls for capital. Mr. Dumont, before we get started, yes. or before you get started, um, do you want a sense of how much more time you will be with this witness? Five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to make sure that we have enough time to complete the proceeding today? So. Oh, yes. And I have very few questions for the department's witnesses. Thank you. When a subsidiary, such as Vermont Gas Systems, requires capital from Energy Air, what are the steps they take? That's a difficult question for me to answer. Because we're remote, we're upstream. I would guess the first step of that subsidiary would be for their board to approve for cash flow. I'm sorry, to approve? For, for, for an investment by the shareholder because they required it an investment by the show. But the board, that board entities, and I'm assuming, that, <coughs> because I don't know the details, and I'm assuming that board entities will review the decision, review what's required, review the budget, review everything, and say, okay, 
and they need a cash off for this one. When you say that board, which board are you referring to? Any of the subsidiaries. Energy, for example. For us, that's the best board. Energy will do that. And I would expect, and that's my understanding, that the GS and GMP would do the same. Do you have first-hand knowledge about what Energier, formerly known as Gas Metro, does in response to a request or a call from BGS for capital? Do you have yes. Do you personally have first-hand knowledge of what Energier, formerly Gas Metro, does in response to a to a request or a call from BGS for capital? Energy will review on a yearly basis what are the funds required by its operation and the operation of the subsidies. They all will go, each will provide their budget, their budget will be approved by their own boards, and those will come to Energy, and Energy then looks at the funding it requires for maybe projects everywhere, the different projects. I'm all down there. Put them together to say, okay, do I have enough debt to fund that? Do I have enough equity? Sometimes they have all the resources they need, all the financial resources they need. Sometimes they need to make a cash call up. So everything is bundled together. And that's how we could it be a decision from the Régie d'Energie du Québec on, the, on, the, on XYZ. They look at their financial needs as any company will look at. Their financial needs. Is the answer you just gave based on your own personal experience serving it on the gas metro slash energy report? That's my understanding on energy board and the other boards. I'm just asking a, what we call a foundational question. Is the testimony you just gave based on your personal experience? Yes, the Board of Energy is reviews on a yearly basis, the budget reviews the financing, energy needs, the debt, reviews the capital project, the management of energy will build the budget, we will review it at the Energy Board, and from there on, the energy from that budget, that go okay, I can finance that. Or maybe because I need to maintain my ratios, my different ratios for credit rating, for regulatory purposes, I need to make a cash call. Within six months, I'll make a cash call. You included in your response that the energy will examine the, I think you said capital projects? Is that the word you used? So, the, for example, the Addison Natural Gas Project would be a capital project. Not at the Energy Board because those projects are dealt. Each subsidiary with their own governing board will be able to their own projects and take the decision on their own projects. I'm not asking you to agree that the Energy Board says yes or no to building a project. What I'm trying to find out is that the Energy Board to find out what details the Energy Board has of capital projects by BGS when the Energy Board approves providing capital to BGS. Capital projects by BGS and BGS every year, I would assume the CEO and the CFO goes to their board and say, This is my project for this year, those are my capital projects. I'm only assuming because I haven't seen anything. Again, we're very upstream. I'm only assuming. They bring a budget like any company. They will bring a project with all their capital projects for their board to decide. Sorry, their? their board to decide. So you have personal experience serving on both Energier's board and Oberco's board, correct? Correct. <coughs> right. So, in the answer you just gave us, 
about how energy responds to capital calls. It was based on your personal experience serving on Energy's board, correct? I give you what I assume it is because I'm not in the day-to-day -day operation. We're holding company or managing our investment into Energy. Energy presents to us a budget for, like they have to do for all the different entities. It's all it's all bunched together, and. The project we approve are the project in Quebec, which are specific to Quebec and which don't go into the rate base. Because everything which is in the rate base is already approved by the regulator. I'm concerned that you may have been, you may, may have been answering a different question I've been asking because I'm trying to ask you questions only about how the energy board operates. We'll get to the Noverco board. It sounds to me like you've been talking about how the Noverco board operates. No, I haven't no, been talking have about Noverco. I've been energy. talking about energy. Okay. So your answer is that you just gave were just about energy. Mm -hmm. That's not what the Mr. McLean, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think if you want to read back his answers, if you're confused, then uh, you can have the answers read back. But he was talking about what he assumes happens on other boards as well. So it's not just his experience on the energy board. Uh, if you want to get clarity, I think we can ask simple questions and you can get well, simple answers. If you want to clarify, I'll let you take over. And clarify. I thought you were asking for clarity. I think the transcript will reflect. Mr. So now I want to ask you about the process at the Novarco board. When you receive a call for capital, what's the process? What documents do you look at? Do you obtain information verbally from board members or from staff? How do you respond? Tell me what the process is. The process is we sit on the board of energy. Okay. Energy has to decide if it does a capital call to both its shareholders. We review the requirement of the capital call at the energy level. And after that, there may be some question. We have some people within our organization that will call them and say, OK, what is the rationale? What is the basis? Generally, the purpose is to rebalance the financing structure of those of, of energy and some of the board members as you pointed out sit on both those boards. Before lunch break you refer to I believe it was a three sentence sorry three page document that you associate with, <coughs> you associate with a Call from Energy or to Novarco for capital. Yeah. What is that document? Uh, it's a simple document under the shelter agreement of Energy or LP per section XYZ, uh, whereby giving you notice that within six months you will have to make a capital call for XYZ. Yeah. That's it. It's one page, two page. That's it. So a capital call for XYZ. What's an example of what XYZ might be? Um, we need to rebalance the different ratios, uh, the structure. I don't recall exactly the, 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 the language. We haven't seen one for quite some time. Now, correct me if I've got this wrong. What I'm understanding from your testimony today is that Energy, or formerly known as Gas Metro, does the evaluation of the details of the capital call. At the Novarco level, it's very generalized and you see very few details. Is that right? We ask every time there's a, a capital call at Energy, 
to be asked the question as vulnerable, what's the reason for the capital call? Why are the why are you making a capital call? Okay, fine, you need to rebalance your structure in general, it's because of rebalancing the structure. And after that, we may have an analyst within our shop talking to the CFO, understanding exactly what are the ratios that needs to be rebalanced. We ask questions. And the capital call is submitted to the Board of Energy for them to send to their shareholder. Before it can be sent to the shareholder, the Board of Energy has to agree to it. You've referred in, my question was about what happens at the Novarco level. And your answer is referred to, I think, what happens at the Energy Board level. And you're right. So at the Energy level, since some of the, some we do receive the call. We know about the call. Um, I sit on the energy. I cannot, you know, that's the fact. And uh, we have a small discussion about it at the board. And we move forward. We, our team, as I said, talk to the CFO, talk to the finance team of energy year, look at exactly the specifics of why you need to rebalance and the way you can you take more debt? Is that an issue of credit? Is that an issue with rating agencies? What's the issue? Um, can we, um, is there any way to, what's the best way to do it? And uh, we move forward. Just for purposes of clarity, you said we have a small discussion about it. When, when you said we, we have a small discussion about it, that we at the Novurco board. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Just a question. I have a follow-up question on that. Just so, um, which was uh, when you are referring to doing the ratio and rebalancing, is there any consideration of specific projects as a part of that? It's difficult to say a specific project because those projects go into the financing need. I cannot tell you exactly which one are there. There may be projects at Energy, there may be projects everywhere. But I'll go back to what's key here is that decision for Vermont are made in Vermont by the boards with the management, which are there. After that, it, what's elevated is the funding of the decision. Okay, but the decision is made down here. And those all funding, when Energy does this budget, it looks at the funding of everybody within the organization, all the different subsidiaries, put them together, okay, and say, okay, this year I don't need funding. Maybe next year, oh, I've got too much there. I need to rebalance. <coughs> then rebalancing, is it for one particular project? It could be from any different project or because they have too much debt. I cannot say, I wouldn't say for project, it's for projects in Quebec, but probably for investment requirement in Vermont or other. Because at the energy board, we don't decide, we, the, the Vermont entities decide and take the decision on their project. You, you wouldn't provide advice or um, or direct whether a project should proceed. It's limited to how it should be funded. Is that a fair characterization? The decision to proceed with a project is made by each of these entities. Below America. And would Novarco have some say in that? No, the, each entities have their own boards, have their own governance. Our majority with independent members from energy, as I stated in my response, and take their own decision for this project. Thank you. Um, does the department have any? Oh. I'm sorry, just before we pass the witness, I want to make sure and know that um, the state of the record, what exhibits oh, yeah. it coming. I know we've given a ruling in many to the 
5, 8, 9, 10, denied admission on Exhibit 6. Exhibit 1, did 7 come in? Okay, that, seven. Okay, so 7 came in, but I believe on Exhibits 1 through 4, there was uh, Attorney Huma did move to admit those. We delayed the ruling on those while you asked questions. Um, so I just want to make sure we clear up. Are you moving to admit exhibits one through four? I thought four was admitted without objection, but I may be wrong. Just the shareholder notice. I don't know if I'm going to do this right. Well, I may be wrong. Anyway, I'm moving one through four in any event. I've heard about an objection. They did? Okay. No. Are you maintaining your objection to exhibits one through four? Um, I, um, I'm fine with. I'm fine with admitting the shareholders, uh, the April exhibit plus four. That's fine. Um, the other ones, there were there were no questions about the other ones because the witness wasn't familiar with those. So I don't see any reason to admit one through three that weren't the subject of any testimony. I think I tend to agree with Mr. I don't know if you can establish relevance and foundation for those documents. Well, it's correct that I have not examined the witness letter because he hadn't read them. But um, I think the documents may be useful to the commission hearing officer. Um, it's certainly the kinds of documents the commission could, on its own, obtain, evaluate, and just give notice to the parties because they're, they're public documents. It's, it's the Canadian equivalent of an SEC file. They satisfy the board's rule. Um, I don't think it's critical either way, but I think it's useful to have everybody available. I don't think it hurts, and I think it, it um, the documents contain a fair amount of information about the Vermont activities of Valineer. And that's that's what, what I was going to go through with the witness and discuss. record is already um, uh, complicated a bit by some of these issues that aren't directly relevant and so I, I'm not sure that having um, these very lengthy reports is, is going to advance any of the issues that, um, of consequence here. Example, sorry. Um, what I was just going to say is, for example, if you look at the 2018 annual report, it mentions Vermont 81 times. Um, there are maps of distribution systems in Vermont. Um, they, they disclose how much income Gas Metro is getting from the Vermont uh, subsidiaries. It shows the importance of Vermont subsidiaries to Gas Metro. That's that's what I want the relevance. Sorry, I didn't say that earlier. There's not a, um, well, I'll let you decide. I know that um, you were in the middle of um, talking about it. Pardon me. Can I just ask one clarifying question? Because it was at the very beginning of the testimony, um, of just of the witness. Of, was it your testimony that you have not read any of these three documents, the cross one, cross two, and cross I think my answer was yes, but let me explain why. Valina owns 29%, we own 71%. So, and we sit at the board, so we know the 100%, we sit at the board of the 100%. I don't sit at the board of Valina to review those documents. I'm not part of the audit committee of Valina to review those documents, okay? So we have a very good understanding underlying, part of the underlying asset, because Valina has something which are different than Novaco in terms of Valina. They have difference in ownership in assets. But 
Do I look at that on a regular basis? Is it my job to look at that on a regular basis? This is Valina and this is Valina for to review those. We at Noverco, as owner of 71% of energy, we know very well part of the business which is also owned by Valina. But you have not read these three times. Specifically those three. I don't read the report of Valina on a regular basis. So I believe Mr. Dumont's done, and we do have some limited cross-examination to follow up, I think, on the questions that Mr. Dumont just had about the capital structure of uh, energy and the various subsidiaries of the GP and the GX. Make sure that you get closer to the microphone. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you, but I'm worried about closing the microphone. My apologies. I you both seem to be um, Mr. Foshe, do you know offhand approximately the total assets that Energy Air Inc. owns in dollars, either Canadian or American dollars? Seven million, seven billion Canadian dollars. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Seven, seven billion. So when one of the Vermont subsidiary companies, let's take Vermont Gas, we've been talking about Vermont Gas, let's assume Going forward, Vermont Gas wants to complete a new $100 million capital project. That project would be funded through a mix of debt and equity capital, correct? Oh, yes, okay. And BGS would take the debt out in its own name, correct? correct? And their capital structure is subject to review by our PUC, correct? Correct. So the equity portion of that, if they needed funding from their shareholder, they would initially make a request to NNEC, is that correct? Right. And so any NNEC, let's assume it's $50 million, and they're funding the project 
they would effectively bundle that $50 million capital request with the other subsidiaries that are under NNEC, whether it be GMP or the solar company, and then that would go up to Energier. And so Energier would then bundle that $50 million into the broader pool of investments that it has in Quebec, and then that would also potentially be the subject of a capital call to know where about. If a NNEC doesn't have access to debt to fund that, B, if Energier has access to debt, and if all those steps after taken are they request funding, they all go to the shareholders for funding. And you referred to various ratios and rebalancing. Is that typically balancing debt and equity to maintain um, appropriate leverage ratios, or is it broader than that? It's debt to equity and regulatory ratios also. And now let's assume on a hypothetical situation, there were some emergency that happened with one of the entities controlled by energy or whether it's a natural disaster or something that requires an unexpected large infusion of capital and that request is made up through a capital call to Noverco. At that point in time, would Noverco probe the details of why there's an unusual request for capital? If it's a, an emergency, I would expect energy to be able to tap on their revolving facility and their uh, facility for that if an yeah, emergency. Sorry, and, and their what for that? Their, to tap on their revolving credit facilities. They have revolving credit facilities for situations like that and other situations. So that would be the first. And after that, it would be a rebalance in two times. And when capital calls come in, do you have a feel for what the scale of the, the dollars requested tend to be? Are we talking $10 million or are we talking? Oh, no, we're ten, talking um, a billion $100 million, $200 million. <clears throat> I think those are all the questions I have. We have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, question about Valonier and how the decision to purchase Valonier came about and, and why. So if you could tell us just some background on that, that would be helpful. Sure. Um, on a regular basis, we, we review... Um, and we is Noverco? Energy. 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 We review the strategic plan, how to achieve the strategic plan, and we have discussion with our partners and so on that. And um, some of the opportunities, as mentioned in my, in my book about its discovery or, or testimony, testimony. Um, some of the potential acquisitions that energy uh, would like to potentially look at local distribution companies in other states and Canada are pretty substantial in terms of investments and um, that was always a bit of a, an issue of energy uh, by now. What was a bit of an issue? How Valinair could fund their own portion of the potential investment. So um, there was a bit of an issue about whether they could fund their own portion of the and um, for that reason at some point we said okay how are we going to deal, how are we going to best Position energy. How can we best position energy to be able to grow energy and making large investments in the future? And understanding that Valinair limited Valinair ability because of its cap, small capitalization to fund potential investment as an equity owner would be an issue. We've decided to and made a proposal to buy an national to buy them. Okay. So you said small capitalization, can you explain what you mean by that? Valinair's market cap is one point two billion. Yeah. And that's the transaction as Mr. Dumont pointed out. For Valinair to go and draw if you take for example the LDC would be three billion dollars four billion dollars, 
half of it funded by equity. I'm just making numbers, rough, rough numbers here. Half of it by debt, so four billion, two billion by debt, so two billion. But I now would have to fund thirty percent of that, which is six hundred million. When you have a market cap of one point two billion, raising six hundred million would be difficult. Sorry, when you're talking about funding large investments in the future, are you talking about entirely new entities, or are you including additional I'm talking investments? Entirely new entities. Not additional investments into BGS or GMP. Additional investment into BGS, unless BGS and GMP come with a huge project, which I'm not aware of. And has the uh, proposed acquisition been approved by the Bellinair shareholders? Can you give us a status on that? Yes. The proposed acquisition has been approved at a special board of Bellinair. Um, Two held on June 11, through a plan of arrangement, which has been approved by the court in Quebec. The other approval that were required was FERC, which has been approved also. So, yes, this transaction has been approved by the majority of the shareholders of Valimaya. I'm sorry, uh, by the majority of the shareholders of Valimaya under court approved arrangement <coughs> in Quebec on June 14th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in your initial testimony, you said the transaction will occur either in one step or two, depending upon the approval of the common and preferred Valimaya shareholders. So is it now a, a one step, step and, and has that one step been completed? Both steps have been completed at the same time. Okay. Both the, the, the regular shareholders and the preferred shareholders have approved the transaction. testimony just before on page 17, on line 17, page 2. Trend cap LP is majority owned by Kellis, CDPQ, at 64.74%. Okay. okay. So the remaining are other shareholders of Trend cap. Case doesn't own 100% of trend oh. care. Who are they? Yeah, who are they? Um, British Columbia Investment Fund, which is the pension fund of British Columbia. Uh, 
Um, the pension fund uh, uh, union workers in Quebec, which have been there for, for, for 10 years and more. Both of them have been there for 10 years and more, which is called FSTQ. Mm -hmm. Fonds de solidarité des travailleurs du Québec, which is the pension fund of the, one of the biggest unions in Quebec. FSTQ. FSTQ. Okay. And the, the last one is um, the retirement fund of Université du Québec. I'm sorry, of what? University of Quebec. Thank you. And this is, if I'm correct, public information which is on the website of Energy. But the majority of PENTA, 64.74, is owned by CDPQ. 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 Yes, because it is a general partner of Penta, so it controls Penta. The other investors are passive, and therefore it appoints the member of Trenca on the board of um, Are those passive investors similar? Entities to the CAS? It sounded like it from what you said about the pension, but I just want to confirm and understand. They're, they're pension funds. The CAS is not a pension fund, it's a pension fund manager. So the CAS is. Sorry, it's a pension fund manager. Manager. Okay. The others are really pension funds. Um, the pension fund of the union, the pension fund of the university, the pension fund, I uh, have to check what BC means, the ben uh, British Columbia Investment Corporation, is that thing. But they're, they're, they're managing funds for different, uh, they're probably a, a fund manager also. I'm going to interrupt just to point out, if you look at page number one of the exhibit, it's not in evidence, exhibit cross two, there's a diagram that helps explain the witness's testimony. It's consistent with this testimony. It just may help you look through this. I'm agreeing with witness and saying it's it's a funny. What, what page is that? It's uh, uh, it's the it's page number one, but it's actually the one, two, fourth page. And it's also available last time I checked on the energy website. Six months. 
Including the CEO of Imagine. Including what? The CEO of Imagine. CEO of Imagine. change the, the percentage of board seat of Enbridge at, and the board of control or the ownership of Enbridge inside the work group. So they have one third of the board seat. They'll have one third after that of the board seat under at energy year. Three divided by nine, which is one third. So that is the same, exactly the same thing. There is no plan nothing that could change. This transaction was led, it's not proposed by Enbridge, it's not an Enbridge transaction. It was led by K in order to help to solve an issue we had for potential growth at Energy in terms of funding for growth at Energy And continuing on supporting the growth of Vermont entities. So we're struggling a little with the numbers, sure. I guess, that, um, because Enbridge is entitled to a proportionate share of appointments, correct? Right. And it's it's not one third; it's thirty-eight point eight nine percent after the transaction. If the trans if this transaction is approved, right? Enbridge owns thirty-eight eight percent of Novaco right now. So when I plug 38.89% times nine, I think it comes out to 3.5001. It's, it's just barely, if you were to round the direction it would round, it would seem to give Enbridge four seats. Am I doing the math wrong, or is there another document that No, you're, you're not doing the math wrong, but it's not important because Enbridge was is a minority or stay a minority and they have no control over the board decisions of either at the Novaco level, as I stated in my response to discovery, nor at the board level of Novaco, nor at the board level of energy. But it's possible they would have four of the nine seats. It's possible that they will have four. Okay, right now they don't have it. I don't recall when they had four, quite honestly. Well, the, but Valinor is what's kept them from having that four, correct? Because their proportion currently, the, if, it's, if they're at a 28% interest, then they couldn't have four of nine. I haven't made the math, but I don't see why. Enbridge would increase because that doesn't give them more control. Because it would still be 5 4? Because it would still be a majority. If you, if you go back to, um, let me point you out, and I read this this morning, since we have the majority, TrendCap as the majority of the level, TrendCap as a majority of the board member. And that will go down also at the energy level. Yes, I, I don't think anyone's questioning the majority portion. I think it's just how much of the minority that we're trying to figure out would be there uh, and if this transaction is approved. And maybe it would, it would help to go to page three of your June 7 testimony. Question four, uh, is about makeup of the energy board before and after the acquisition. And that's what we've been talking about. And the last sentence says, 
in the event that the size of the board further changes following the acquisition, the nomination rights of Kess through TrendCap LP and Enbridge through IPL Sesame will remain proportionate to the holding of shares at the Perico level. So that proportion would be the 38.89% after the transaction, if the transaction is approved. And it will remain as it is right now. The own 38% we will continue to own 38%. And the nomination right, as you pointed out, uh, it's to round it, if I'm correct, to the 3.50. Um, but at that, um, I haven't seen any change from Enbridge to increase the number of, 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 of board members. And um, the six will be appointed by Kenneth, and three will be appointed by Enbridge. And it, but if there were a change, like say it went to a seven person board, then it would be these percentages used, and that would be four chosen by the cast and three by Enbridge, right? And then make the calculation, so. Okay, does that sound right for a seven person? I know six would be But it doesn't change the control. The control of the majority will still be left. And, and who decides to change the size of the board? Who would make that? Who would propose that decision? Who would make that decision? I think at which cut the number of board? The ener energy board. Would the energy board um, could have proposed to change the number of members? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I'm wondering who who has the authority to request and to approve of a change in the number of energy or board numbers in that person. That's a good question. I may have to follow up on that. I may have to look, ask the company to look at the statute to change that. But I want to reassure the commission that as long as we have majority ownership at, and we will continue to have, as of today, we have majority ownership at the level, that will be the same at the energy level, and that will enable us to name the majority of the four members at the energy level. Mm -hmm. testimony uh, stated that the acquisition does not result in a fundamental change to upstream ownership. Do you recall that or do you need a copy to clear up? I recall that. And so that we have a better understanding of uh, a fundamental change. Would you describe what you would, would consider to be a fundamental change? Fundamental change here, upstream ownership is here. Novaco is already an order of 71% of energy, and we're buying 29%. Okay. We already have the control of the GP of energy because we own 100% of them. Okay. 
and adding 29%. I knew it's important, but it's not a fundamental change. If we were, let's say, doing, if we were at 51% and we wanted to buy 29%, that would be a substantial change. So it's purely based on the, the numbers and whether it's we're already a majority, so we're adding to that majority, we're increasing that majority. We're not changing control, we're not changing anything that has been working and used for the last more than 10 years. back to governance, and I want to spend a bit of time on governance. The way we manage energy is through our participation at the Board of Energy. We don't direct energy to do X, Y, Z. Energy has its own board, and the board, with the recommendation of management, will take decision and will support management. The main decision that board takes is succession planning and approve or advise on the strategy of planning. After that, there is a decision about potential acquisition and others. And that percolates, I don't know if percolates is the right word in English, but that goes down to the subsidiaries where each subsidiary have their own board to which they report in terms, I'm sure it's in the statutes, and they're managed independently, their CEO report to them. Yes, there may be discussion between or exchange of information, but because ultimately we need to cons energy or needs to consolidate all the financial statements, produce MDNAs, produce financial statements and everything there is discussion. But the decision making is made at all the subsidiary levels in terms of decision making. So to answer your question, is there a specific document? I'm not sure. I would have to look at all the statutes, start with the statute of energy, which I'm not familiar. I haven't looked at those statutes for quite some time. And I don't know about the statute of BGS and GMP, but they're regulated entities, so decision making, I'm sure, has to be done at those entities. And it's the same way we manage other investments, where minority shareholder or majority shareholder, typically those boards have decision making uh, powers which are not to the shareholder. They take the decision making. They make the decision upon the recommendation of the manager. And just to clarify, when you're talking about the statutes, it sounds like you're talking about the uh, bylaws. Bylaws. Okay. I'm sorry. That's what I thought. No, it's helpful clarification. Thank you. I guess I would request if you have those available, um, that Verico could point us to something that has that in the, in the bylaws of the corporate entities and, and, or, and the corporate entity and also give us uh, more information if you have it on the question I asked earlier about 
who can request a change to articles of uh, how many board members are on that or your board if you can approve that request. Thank you. Uh, yes, I have just a few follow-up questions. Uh, Mr. Fauché, do you know if the bylaws uh, for the boards of Vermont Gas and Green Mountain Power have a specific requirement regarding uh, whether the board members are independent from upstream owners? No, I don't know because I've never seen those bylaws. But we. The, the, the philosophy of the investments uh, is true at Energy Year, it's true throughout the chain here is that they have independent board members, the majority of independent board members. I want to go back to um, your May 2nd supplemental testimony. Do you have that in front of you? Sure. And refer, refer you back to, um, we're on page 3, lines 12 through 14. Um, do you see there where you refer, um, you state, um, as I noted in my prior testimony, GMP and BGS have always been managed independently from all upstream owners. I'm sorry, upstream. Upstream owners. Oh, thank you. Can you uh, explain to us what you meant in that uh, sentence there about managed independently? Yeah, sure. Um, my understanding, and it's the same that we we're doing in, in, at Energy, is that the board governs the company. The company is governed by the board, and the management, daily operation is done to the management. So we don't direct the, the management. We're not implicated in the decision making directly with the management. The management decision process goes to the board. I would expect the same to be applicable to each of those entities. And um, that's, that's the answer. I want to talk a little bit more about some questions you got from um, the hearing officer on page three and um, starting on page two of your supplemental testimony. So right, right where we are, the May 2nd testimony. Um, Currently, how much of Noverco is owned by the Enbridge, the Enbridge entity? 38.89%. And how much of Noverco is owned by the CAS entity? CAS, Trend Cap owns 61.11% uh, and Trend Cap is, is controlled by CAS Master. And if we add um, the 38.89% and the 61.11%, that's 100%, correct? Correct. And after um, uh, the acquisition, if it's, if it's approved here, uh, what will Enbridge's percentage in Noverco be? The same, 38.89%. And what will the CAS's ownership interest in Noverco be after the acquisition? The same, 61.11%. Two trend cap. 
Now, can you? I'm sorry, I didn't. What was that? Through Trident. Through Trident. Okay. Can you take a look specifically on page three of your uh, May second testimony? Sure. Do you see um, lines two through four? Uh, your testimony indicates that. Um, uh, referring to the acquisition, that this will in turn increase the overall indirect interest that the CAS from 28.09% to 39.56%. Do you see where I am? Yes. Can you explain um, explain how you calculated that 39.56%? Yes. 39.56% is equal to 64.74%, which is the ownership of a subsidiary of Case and Tanka, times 61.11%, which is Trendcap ownership in Novaco. If you multiply those two numbers, you will arrive to 39.56. I'm pretty sure. And those numbers, um, just so it's clear here, those uh, numbers that you're referring to, the 61.11% and the 64.74%, are those um, on page two of your testimony? Correct. Thank you. Just to, but those, those issues go to, I mean, the, the, the numbers on page two relate to ownership of the Verco. The numbers on before and after numbers on page three relate to the before and after effect on Energear, LP, G GMP, and VGS. So the the effect on Energear, GMP, and VGS after Valineer goes away is that the percentage increases. It's the indirect ownership. So if you're buying Valineer, that Noverco buys Valineer. So Noverco goes from 71% to 100%. Right, so those numbers grow in so terms of the impact grows. on GMP and energy. The GMP, VGS have always been owned by energy at 100%. That doesn't change. Right, but the percentage that that uh, trend cap and IPL systems own, or the CAS and Enbridge own energy grows. Through Novaco, because Novaco goes Through from 71% to 100%. Right. But in Novaco, nothing changes in Novaco. Sure. The shareholder agreement doesn't change. Enbridge doesn't have control over the board of Novaco. Enbridge doesn't have the majority of the board member of Novaco. Nothing changes there. Thank you. We have one third of the board members and continue having one third of the board members. I'm going to call Mr. C.V. Harold and Mr. Leonard J. Kujawa, who filed joint panel testimony in this case. You can pull one of those chairs. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mr. Harold and Mr. Kajal, can you try if possible to speak into the microphone? Um, and 
to have that. And do you have copies of your pre-filed testimony and the exhibits which were marked as PSD-CBH1 and PSD-LJK-2 up with you? Yes. And is there any need to revise or edit or correct any portions of that testimony or exhibits? No. And we spoke about this previously, but I want to remind you when you are here as a joint panel, if one of you responds to a question that the other one disagrees, or if you disagree with what your partner said, you have an obligation to let everyone in the room know that you disagree with your partner's response. We understand that. And so Mr. Harold and Mr. Kujawa are available for cross-examination. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please uh, share with us the documents you reviewed in preparing your pre-filed testimony? <clears throat> we re reviewed all the filed documents in this proceeding, so uh, most, most important to us were the original petition of uh, Zenko and the testimony of us, Mr. Fushu. Uh, and the supplement uh, to that. But we also reviewed the additional uh, filings that were made by the uh, interveners uh, as well. Filings meeting the motion to intervene? Yes. Would you read the discovery answers provided by the record? Yes. Did you rely on those in preparing your pre-filed testimony? I don't recall that there's a reliance on that particular document. I think the most important was the petition by Navarro for uh, the transaction they planned to make. They wanted approval to make. So what, what research went into arriving at your opinions. <clears throat> to elaborate on Mr. Kajawa's answer, we, we read all of the filings <clears throat> so that we could make sure we had an overall under, understanding of the tra transaction and, and what, what it, questions were, were being raised. <clears throat> so what was your last question, please, sir? Well, to be blunt with you, I'm wondering if what you basically did is say, hey, if we were on the commission, this is what we would decide. Or did you go beyond that and actually compare some expert analysis? Well, we, we uh, read everything, we studied it, we thought about it, we talked to each other, we had discussions with the staff here to make, make sure we un understood the issues, and then we relied on the fact that we been in this business for 50 years or more and have a good understanding of corporate governance and what is appropriate practice and, and so our con conclusions were based on all of our basically knowledge as well as reading and understanding this tra transaction. You say you've been in this business for a long time. What do you mean by this business? Well, we've both worked in the uh, regulated industry business of uh, utilities as well as other corporate governance uh, questions, corporations. So we, we have a general understanding of what's normal, acceptable business practices. Neither of you have mentioned reading the board's order in 2007. Do you know what order I'm referring to? Board to order of 2007? Yes. No, sir, I don't, I don't know what Have you're we, referring to. Did you ask any questions, do any research on the analysis the commission, formerly known as the board, went through in deciding to allow Gas Metro and Northern New England Energy Corporation to acquire Green Mountain Power? <clears throat> no, we. We didn't we accepted the fact that they owned the co company and they were moving forward in a, in a pro proposed tra transaction. We didn't go back to say what happened to to cr create where they were today. Do you know what the principal reason was 
that was articulated by the board as to why they approved of the acquisition of Green Mountain Power by Gas Metro and its subsidiaries? No. No, I, I don't. Hmm. What is Green Mountain Power's credit rating now? No, object. I think that question goes beyond the scope of the testimony for what is it provided. Well, if you read the board's order from 2007, you would say it's directly relevant. I'm not aware of it. We have to rule on an objection before it answers. I'm sorry. That's okay. So we'll allow the witness to answer the question and remind uh, Mr. Dumont that we have to stay within the scope of this yes. procedure. And for the sake of the record and the commission, I'm referring to findings. In fact, 18, 19, and 20. What's the date of the order you're talking about here? March 26, 2007, document number 7213. So the answer was you're not aware of the credit rate? That's correct. Transactions approved, it could potentially provide capital more quickly. Can you explain that a little more? One of the critical resources of a company, of course, is capital. And the availability of capital is critical to their long-term success. So having that capability is, is essential for a corporation's uh, success. There are times when markets are open and then something happens and they're closed. And so it's very important if you need financing to be ready and to go when you need it when the market's open because at times events occur and capital is not very, very easily obtained. So having the ability to have your house in order, so to speak, and move quickly can be very helpful. And can you just connect the dots for me of how the approval of this transaction, which would eliminate Valinor would allow, uh, I guess it's energy or to move more quickly, or GMP or BGS to move more quickly in obtaining capital. Yes, sir. What what happens when you're doing any kind of financing? <clears throat> All the owners will be required to sign documents and approve it, and so the more players there are, the longer generally it takes. Have a sort of leaner, leaner team, so to speak, you can move more, more quickly. Uh, explained by the previous 
the witness, uh, Ballinier, was a much smaller entity in relation to the uh, ownership of Interjare, and thus uh, was a source of limitation of how uh, Interjare could, could proceed in terms of financing. So getting Ballinier to no longer be part of the entity facilitated the ability of uh, Interjare to, uh, to finance. So, and also, of course, the simplification of the corporate structure have multiple entities. Sometimes you have to have multiple entities, but sometimes it's smarter to reduce the size in order to simplify and to expedite the building of the corporation to make decisions in the wise. In your opinion, do you think there's any benefit to having Ballinger there as another set of eyes on a request for capital? That would be rather speculative, I think. Just obviously, a set of eyes always uh, potentially has, uh, has value. And whether Ballinger specifically in this particular case, uh, added value. Uh, Bellinair is basically a passive investment if I understand their, their corporate uh, uh, purpose. So they offered very little in terms of insight into the energy markets where uh, energy was, was operating. So I, didn't, I don't think Bellinair was an ideal partner to have in terms of offering uh, knowledge capital uh, to Energer. Um, from the standpoint of corporate governance, um, if the commission approves this transaction, it is expected that the, the board makeup would be 6-3. Um, and if, if that Makeup were to change to five four. Do you, in your opinion, are there any issues associated with with that? I don't see any issues other than there would have to be some reason why it would change to five four because the six three represents a rough approximation of the owner ownership at the moment, which seems to be the equitable and you know, fair fair way to do it. I think it's based on rounding, is what we established earlier. So right, so it's like 30, 39 percent, uh, with one, 61 with the other. So it's kind of roughly six, 63. Uh, but if it were five to four, it would, it would still be a vote of sending the five voted one way they could control. So the control. Yes, yeah, to go to go to from three to four it doesn't accomplish much in terms of control. It certainly uh, represents ownership, but it means you own more. In terms of corporate governance, I'm not sure that uh, that makes that much difference. The, the decision of the five is going to be the decision. The four can, can, can complain, but so what? I wish to follow up. Why don't you go ahead? I wish to follow up on General Counsel's questions about it. I wish to follow up on General Counsel's questions about another set of eyes. Mr. Harold, I first the question for you. It appears in your resume that you have a fair amount of experience with Sarbanes Oxley. Correct? Yes, sir. I have worked, worked with it a lot. Would it be fair to say that one of the goals of Sarbanes Oxley is exactly what General Counsel said to get, make sure we have more sets of eyes looking at what goes on within corporations? Well, certainly that would, uh, that was one of the thoughts behind it. It was to make sure that entities had appropriate con controls and had some, someone independent of 
management to look at those controls and ver verify that they exist. Uh, and there's always, assuming they're reasonable people and are trained appropriately, some benefit to another pair of eyes. So I don't think our answer was to say that that wasn't um, appropriate, but we were saying we thought the value of getting to be a more efficient organization more than I'll, I'll set that. Just to follow up on that answer, if I might, you were intimately connected with a Southern company for 18 years, correct? I actually worked for Southern about uh, 28, 29. I lost uh, count, and since then, I've, since I've re retired, I've uh, come come back in two or two or three roles. So I, I have over 30 years of experience with the Southern Company. The Southern Company is publicly owned, is it not? Oh yes, sir. It's one of the largest commonly held stocks in the country. So it reports to shareholders about. It's many, many subsidiaries, does it not? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. The Southern Company is a holding company for many other subsidiary companies, correct? Yes, sir. There's uh, a number of sub subsidiaries. About 20 electric companies that it owns? I don't think it's that, that many. It's principally uh, about five electric operating co companies uh, in recent times they also bought the gas co company which operates gas operations up up through the mid midwest and they recently acquired a company called power secure which is into micro grids and backup gener generation and battery storage so have you noticed any problem that its subsidiary corporations have experienced in access to capital because the parent company is publicly held and is accountable to shareholders? <clears throat> Not quite sure how to answer. How have I noticed there's there's always a possibility that the way Southern's organized the, the equity is raised by the parent then each operating co company is responsible for its own debt. Uh, that's done for legal reasons since the state state regulated and wanted to be sure that each state had, had approved the issuance of the debt. Mr. Kajawa, I have a similar set of questions for you involving the, the E word. You were at Arthur Anderson for a long time, were you not? Yes, sir. And uh, you were working Arthur Anderson when they were the accountants for Enron? Yes. Do you think an additional or more public set of eyes would have been assistance, the assistance in protecting the public in that situation, Enron? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, Enron was publicly owned, was it not? Yes, sir. But in hindsight, it turned out that the board was not paying enough detail to what was going on with its subsidiaries, correct? As I recall the facts, the management was hiding things from the board, and the board was not fully informed. And weren't the principal problems those of its subsidiary companies? The hidden events were various subsidiaries, yes. Mr. Dumont's initial question to you, or one of his initial questions to you, related to Green Mountain Power's current credit rating. I, I lodged an objection. I realize you rephrased the question a little bit. And it's correct that you were not asked at any point in time to review the credit ratings of either VGS or Green Mountain Power as a part of your review in this proceeding, were you? That's correct. Um, but can you speak generally how a transaction of this type at the parent level could potentially affect the credit ratings of either GMP or VGS? Depending on the 
fin financial con condition of the parties, it, it could either help or, or hurt. In this case, it appears that uh, <clears throat> it certainly would not hurt for them to buy out the limit. Millenaire, if I'm saying that right, the company, Novarco has adequate re resources, and certainly the uh, parent corporations are appropriately funded, so that I don't think there would be any issue with the credit rating. That's all I have. Thank you. I believe that's all the witnesses. Um, that's correct. Thank you. Um, and in the scheduling order, the briefs were set to be due on August 2nd, and we did not have a date for reply briefs. Um, so if the August 2nd date holds, uh, reply, reply briefs, uh, typically we have them do one week later, so August 9th. That would work for the department. Mr. Dumont? We'll make it work. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. And just wanted to note that in the department's testimony, um, the witnesses stated that the department intended to respond to the concerns raised by public commenters in more detail in its legal briefing. Is that still the plan? Yes, we still plan to do so. Okay. Uh, we have a couple more comments coming in today, actually. That was okay. just to us. So any comments that come in up to the point that we file a brief, I'll try to incorporate anything you think in those comments in the briefing. Okay. And if folks didn't hear that, can you just repeat that? Yes, we will respond and address issues that have been raised in public comments in the legal briefing that we file in this case including any comments that are filed between now and the date that the brief is filed. And we um, asked for Neverco to provide some additional information. Um, is, that, is that clear what, what is needed? And do we need to restate that just for the record? It was related so to the, the first piece of, Yeah, the first piece of information, I think, was that um, whether there was a change to the number of board seats on the energy and, and who would decide that. Um, whether there could be. Whether there could be and, and who would decide that. So we're going to find that, process that out. Works. Yeah, we're going to find that out and submit information. I, I think the second uh, request related to the bylaws, which um, uh, I think Mr. Poche clarified that they that he doesn't know whether um, what what those bylaws state with respect to independent ownership, we can still, I think, I don't I don't I'm not, I don't know if that's if that is that still a standing request, and if so, I guess we can inquire as to how we would how we can get bylaws and from which entities. But I think that if we want to look at all the bylaws, we can certainly submit. Yeah, yeah we'd, we'd like you to do that. So bylaws for the. It would be any bylaws and any of the entities that codify what has been presented in the testimony about the independence of uh, the subsidiaries, particular GFB and BGS. I could ask that those be filed sufficiently advanced of the briefing dates so that we all have access to them. So August 2nd is a week from today. Could you provide those by the end of this week? We, we will do our very best to do it by the end of the week. Thank you. Thank you. And also just to mention, um, uh, hearing officer Papini mentioned the public comments and uh, the department talked about that as well. And we really appreciate all the people who are able to show up at this uh, proceeding and we appreciate all the comments that have been filed and uh, encourage people to continue to file comments if you wish. Uh, obviously the sooner the better and if anyone 
has questions about how to file those in the EPUC system, our clerk's office is happy to help you with that. Also, just want to let you know that I have decided not to try to use the deposition, that we, depositions that we took yesterday or the deposition exhibits. Those issues have been addressed sufficiently already. Thank you. Is there anything else that we need to discuss today? I don't have anything. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.